Well, uh, my name's Peter Hutton. My connection to the coast goes back a long way with the Hutton family. My grandfather, my great-grandfather -grand, great had a when they left Raspberry Creek, came and lived at uh, Woodbury. He uh, gave, uh, there's a street called Hutton Street and around Hutton Street was known as Huntley Grange because Huntley's a family name and Huntley Grange was about 20 or 30 acres which was given to him and my grandmother as a wedding present. Uh, there was nothing ever done, he did sell it uh, years and years later but it's never, I don't think anybody knows anything about Huntley Grange but we always knew about it. And my, grandpa, my grandfather's brother, of course, was uh, Roy Hutton at the bakery. Hutton's bakery in your boom. So we used to come down, we lived out west of Queensland as kids and that, and we used to come down here for holidays. So we've got a fair connection with your boom going back to, well, the mid, uh, at least 1911 when Hutton's first moved down here. So there's a lot of uh, history behind it. Uh, we moved down here in 1953 from Alpha. Dad bought a pineapple farm. We moved down. I spent the last two years of school here. I got a job working for Howard Whitteson as an apprentice plumber. Uh, and that were the days you worked. There was no such thing as backhoes. If you needed to dig a septic tank, you got a pick and shovel and you dug it. And you mix the cement by hand, and you had cast iron and pipe and galvanised pipes that was all threaded. There was no plastic, nothing like that. Uh, after I left that, I moved to Monto, uh, where I was born. Left there, came back here, started working with my father on the pineapple farm, and um, <coughs> came back rather, got married, Norma. Uh, started work on the Pineville Farm and was on the Pineville Farm right through to about 1994, 95 I think. I could be wrong with that. 90, 92 I think it was, yeah. So we had a farm, uh, the original farm was on Barlow's Hill. Uh, we had a farm on uh, Mickleville Hill. And then we went to Farnborough and uh, later on another one at um, Kawonga, and that was the last farm. Involvement in the community. I joined the Army Reserve in 63, and I was there for 32, 33 years, rising from the exalted rank of private to warrant officer. Uh, it was a hobby for me. Other people played sport. My sport was the Army, and I enjoyed it because you mixed with different people. You mix with people who worked in the railways, you mix with people who worked in banks, whereas the pineapple farming, you were just mixing with pineapple farmers. While I was a pineapple farmer, I was also chairman of the Fruit Growth Association and I was also chairman of the Bulk Voting Association. These were organisations which you helped run with the industry. Uh, they were good, they gave you an insight on what was going on in the industry. And probably followed my father because he was chairman of it at one stage too of both organisations and we just got into it and I think you have to get involved with things like that. You're not just sitting back and letting everybody else do the work. However, after I retired and I'd been working at the European uh, Co-op for a while, I was approached by uh, Bobby Jaycock and a couple of people who said, look, they're starting a emergency service cadet unit. We'd like you to be in charge of it. Oh yeah, right on. What's it all involved? So we had a bit of a meeting and I said, yeah, I wouldn't mind doing it. We'd be teaching school kids. I think I got as much out of that working with those young people as they got out of doing what we were teaching them. I really enjoyed it. There's an awful lot of young, great young people out there. Unfortunately, we don't hear about them. We never hear about them. These kids were brilliant. Uh, they were Actually, the parents actually came to us and we said, we don't know what you people are doing, but these kids can hardly wait to get there for training on Tuesday nights. They love it. And we ran some good shows. 
Unfortunately, they closed it down. I had, when they announced they were closing down, we had 15 kids bawling their eyes out. The night they said we couldn't have it in there, crying, why can't we do it? And uh, that was that. Basically that, I didn't have much to do. And Norma joined the University of Third Age. And she was there for a couple of years and said, oh, why don't you come along? So I ended up going along and within about two years they wrote me in on the committee. <laughs> about three years after that they wrote me and said, oh, you could be a president, <laughs> end up as president. So I was there for a couple of years as president of it. Uh, said, okay, well that's about enough for a while. I just think I should drop out for a while. So I dropped out off the committee just as a normal member. And then a couple of years ago they said, oh, we better come back on the president committee again. So I went back on the committee and this year, a couple of weeks ago or a week or so ago, I'm back as president again for another couple of years. Uh, I run, help run one of the music groups. I also do a, help a, just do a discussion group and get along to a few. But it's a great organisation for people who are looking for something to do. I've got, I should have made it that. I've got three children, two girls and one boy. One girl in Cairns, she's got two children. Uh, the girl in, the one girl in Perth, the second one, she's got three. And my son in Madrum has three young girls. And if there's one thing I do like in life, I love my grandkids. I adore the whole lot. <laughs> they uh, gave me a t-shirt for Christmas, and it's got all their photographs on it. And it says, uh, and so I'm supposed to be saying, who are these kids and why are they calling me Pop? <laughs> uh, they've all done well for themselves. Every one of the, the grandkids, are there, except for Scott, Scott, my son's boy, kids, because his eldest is only seven, but uh, I just enjoy being with them. Uh, they tease me, I tease them. I really enjoy them. They're the greatest kids and they've all done well. Due, I think, to their parents' influence. We have got great facilities and thanks to the council for that, we meet, re meet at the uh, Community Development Centre uh, and the girl, the the ladies that run that, uh, Karen, Sue and, uh, and Mary, are uh, really great. Uh, they go out of their way to help us. And um, we don't have to cost, doesn't cost us anything for those things. Yeah, I think people that complain about Yipun and that aren't the people that get out in the community. The people that are out in the community and see what's happening and okay we've got you know when you look at the, the we came to live in Japan in the mid 50s Norma's been living here all her life and when you look at your, what Japan was like in the mid 50s it was a pensioners town then the pineapple industry came in and built it right up now it's dropped off now it's more tourism and it's a dormitory town basically for Rockhampton to live in there when you look at around now what they've done to the, the, the lagoon and the beachfront and all the other things and they've proved and going around having all those murals on the walls that's fantastic i reckon you know instead of a blank wall put something on it and they are really great and people talk about it why not i love the place i can't think of any other place i'd sooner live